Hi, it's Auntie Kay, Yard Sale Serena, here with Uncle Vinti, the Vintage Tool Man, with the Yard Sale Show for the weekend of June the 9th. Um, I want to apologize. I'm uploading a number of videos that we've taped over the past month, and we just haven't had time to upload them to YouTube. So I'm going to try to get that done this weekend. So you're going to be inundated with Yard Sale Shows. So if you don't want to watch them all at once, that's fine. Uh, today, we actually found some pretty cool stuff. I was at a moving sale in Annapolis. This was actually last weekend. And I found this. It was, this had all kinds of junk in there and the case was filthy. But it's a very old Bundy oboe. I paid $15 for it. And these are selling for around 500 and up. Some are selling for $1,000 on eBay. I'm going to take this to the music store and see how much it would cost to have the, um, the pads replaced. And I do need to get a reed for it. Although people always, you always buy your own reeds. But I thought that was a really nice buy. And oboe. I play the flute so I know a little bit about oboes. But I'm not going to play it for you. Uh, at that same moving sale, I got this really nice, neat vintage old straw hat. The woman had been a professional opera singer, so I thought that was really interesting. It came in this box, the Anita Shop, a really uh, upscale boutique, an older boutique. It's no longer in existence in Annapolis, 181 Main Street. Um, all of this stuff I bundled, and I, I paid $40 for a ton of things, so I'm not exactly sure what I paid for this, maybe a dollar. They threw in this Song for Girls music book. I really liked it. The copyright on this is 1924, and I honestly don't know any of these songs. Look at this. And I Have You Birthday, The Brook, Butterflies and the rose, you know, none of these songs. I'm actually gonna see if I play through them and see what they sound like. All right, we found this yesterday at a yard sale. Was it one of the first ones we went to, wasn't it, Uncle Vinti? Yeah. And uh, we were out early. We were out at seven o'clock yesterday. They had 30 on it. I thought it said 80, so I passed it by, and then Uncle Vinti called it to my attention, and he thought it said 30. And we talked to her, and it, and, you know, it does have some problems. The face needs to be replaced, but you can buy those. That's an easy fix. Everything else is good on it, but we talked her down to 20. And we got it home, and the thing works just fine, doesn't it, Uncle Vinti? I think so. So it seems to be working just fine. So we were glad to has find it, that. It has a few problems. Oh, it's an Ingram, Ingram, Ingram. I hope I'm saying that correctly. A mantle clock, or sometimes these were called shelf clocks, clocks, kitchen clocks, parlor clocks. This was the original finish, golden oak, and that's quite ra rare. So we paid 20 for it, and it's worth about 100 I would say. So, oh, and it's circa 1900, so this was from the 1800s. I'll have to do a little bit more research to see when, whether it was 1850, 1890, but it's a very old clock, and I love it. I think it's really nice. Okay, moving on. <laughs> a goodwill find from a couple weeks ago this was all taped up you couldn't even tell what the heck it was I unwrapped it they had this upside down and it's an oil lamp it's an eagle oil lamp I think these are from uh, 19 in the 70s and P&A Risdom manufacturing company was the manufacturer of the burner and they were still making those in the 70s so I think that's when that's from but you know I think I paid two bucks for it can't beat that like it uh, then this past weekend we found some cobalt blue items this is art glass swan very collectible but I pay a couple of bucks for that and he's worth did I look him up yeah he's worth no, about no chips no, about 20. Yeah, again, no chips on any of this. I had to clean him up. He was filthy. I don't know where he'd been sitting, but very nice, highly collectible. Just a, a sugar bowl. I wish I had the creamer to go with it. But again, I think I paid 50 cents or something for that, and I think that's probably worth about five. And these two salt and pepper shakers, there's a man and a woman, 
Again, I think I paid a buck for them, and they're worth, I think they're worth about 10. Did I look them babies up? Five, five or ten dollars on those. So that was good. I like that. Now, <laughs> um, this is really neat. I picked these up. I was late to an estate sale on I can't see when Friday. Oh, Uncle Vinci says not to pick it up. I was late to an estate sale, so I wasn't planning on finding very much. Uh, but these were kind of folded over a quilt rack upside down. So they were like this. So you can tell what they were. So I picked them up and turned them over and said, oh my gosh, look at that. They're these three-dimensional applique textiles. They're from Chile and they are referred to as Arpietas. Arpietas. A-R-P-I-L-L-E-R-A-S or Threads of Resistance. Now, these, this whole technique started when, I guess it was General Pinochet, the dictator overthrew the democratic government in Chile, I think that was in the 70s, and the women, it was very oppressive. In order to get their message out, they started sewing these, and they had hidden message in it. Usually, uh, if this was one of those original, textiles, it would have said something like donde esta, or it would have had an empty chair, it would have had women dancing with other women because the men were all gone, things like that. It would have been a little more symbolic. But since that point in time, in Chile and other countries, the women have started sewing these and, and depicting uh, activities in their daily life. So this says Corrido, see the one underneath. Corrido del Toro. This is one representing cotton the cotton industry growing the cotton here are the little sheepies here this woman's doing something with the cotton that's actually a wad of cotton and then this one is yunsa it says yunsa and i read a little bit yunsa is either a festival or a dance or a celebration where they use a lot of colorful banners and people wear i guess they wear um, scarves colorful scarves and do dancing. So that is what that is depicting. I think these are just fabulous. These, the woman I think had been a dealer or she had paid $64 for these. They have 80 on them and then 64 and I got them for $8 each and I didn't even haggle with that. I just thought they were fabulous. If you look online they do, they sell for 65 and up. Even the ones that they're just making currently. What a fabulous find. Really interesting. I'm at the table. Oh, underneath. Thank you, Uncle Vinti. At uh, the moving sale, this is a cherry little end table. I paid uh, fifteen dollars for that. I just think it's nice. It's in, in pretty good shape, and I think I think I could double my money, or maybe get a little more on that. Okay. Okay. At the <laughs> at the estate sale. This was hanging on the wall. Actually, he had it taped on the wall with uh, scotch tape, or actually blue tape. And I looked at that and I thought, wow, that's really cool. And if you look down on the bottom, it says P-6-1920. And I thought, wow, wouldn't that be awesome if that was an original Ringling Brothers Barnum & Bailey poster? Um, they consolidated. Ringling Brothers and Barnum and & Bailey consolidated in 1920. And this is a reprint of the original poster. I bought this poster for $5. If you look online, the original ones sell for a lot more than that. Can you hold so, it like that? Yeah, I can hold it like that. I was a little disappointed that it wasn't original, but I can tell you, you can tell by the size. The original ones were 42 by, I think, 32 or 36, something in that range. They are larger than what we typically see posters today. This is 36 by 24. Uh, so some of the reissues, they issued this size, and some they issued smaller. So if yours says P on it, that means it's a reissue, or if it is not that original larger size, the 40-something 40, 40 by 30-something size. 
But anyway, I still think it's worth about 50 bucks, and I like it. I think it's really pretty cool. All right, got a couple of these little buckets. These make really nice planters. Spray them some bright color. Put some primer on them, spray them a bright color, and people love them. So that's why I bought those. I think I paid a buck or someone gave them to me. All right, last sale. We were at their sale last year. They're getting ready to sell the house, and the garage was full of stuff. Uncle Vinci's going to show you the tools later. Up on the wall, they had these two charts. They look like they're from the 50s, and this one says copyright 1952, and she told me I could just have those. So I got those. I think those will look great. Uncle Vinti has a lot of vintage tools, and I'm going to hang these up on the wall as part of his display. Now, also hanging on the wall, I found this assortment of yardsticks. I love these. I think she charged me, what, a buck for all of these? Uh, this is Montgomery Ward's Dutch Boy Paint. Um, MJ Styron in Columbia, Island Marina, Fort Washington. This one just Auburn, Maine, made in the USA. Chrysler, Plymouth, Craftsman Sears, McCrory's, and Gimbel's Candies. I have no idea. Oh, Candy by the Yard. That's what their little slogan was. Buy your candy by the yard. But a lot of these have the old phone numbers back before they changed the, the prefix to numbers. So Euclid 36969 or this one LU, whatever that happened to stand for. So if I flip these over, you could see a lot of them have this old exchange, which changed what in the 50s? I guess the Sorry, 50s, yeah. 60s. All right. A lot of people collect these. I think those are cool. I like them. All right. Something else that I got that I picked up was just an old advertising piece for these baseboard heaters. It says, for peak performance on baseboard perimeter systems. I'm not a fan of baseboard heat, but anyway, <laughs> I picked that up. I think uh, they sold that to me for a buck. And people collect things like that. A couple little cast iron trinkety pans. Um, we saw a couple of these at the antique store recently. They wanted $15 each for them. I think I paid $0.50 cents for both of them. And what's this? A horseshoe wine rack? Wine rack. She wanted 5 and we pointed out some issues with it. have to paint it, blah, blah, blah. And she said, okay, 3 bucks." So we bought it for $3. We thought it was kind of unique. And my last item over here was some sand art. I have a friend who collects things like this. Um, I paid three dollars and two dollars respectively. This one on the back explains what it is. Father, Sky, Mother Earth. And then she writes something about it and signs it. So it's signed by the artist. And on the very bottom it says 189. I don't know if that's the number of that's so much they tried to sell it for or sold it for. But anyway, these are worth about, I think, about $49. This one, $49, and that one maybe $20, $29. But I'm probably going to give them to my friend. All right. I also picked up some vintage old movie prints. These are actually pictures, black and white photos. These uh, came out, I think, were issued in the 70s, at least most of them. The first one, James Cagney and Jean Harlow in the, the Public Enemy. Next is Bella Lugosi. Well, let me get out of the picture. Bella Lugosi in Dracula. Next uh, we have Humphrey Bogart and Ingrid Bergman in Casablanca. Just a nice kind of photo shoot of Jean Harlow. And last up in this funky old uh, frame like they used to use in the 50s, a picture of Bella Lugosi, and I'm not actually sure who that is. I have five of these neat vintage photos, and I paid a dollar for all of them. So my plan is to mat them, frame them, and sell them. Okay, one last item that I got at the moving sale was this thing. Look at this. It's a really old, portable 
Let me see if I can zoom in. Will that help? I don't know if that's helping or not. Corona Zephyr Deluxe Model Portable Typewriter. Look at that thing. It's really wild, isn't it? Everything on here works. The lid's a little yucked up, but I haven't cleaned it yet. Whoops, I think I... Whoops. I just said everything works. Now it's falling apart. And the, the top goes on. And it looks like I'm going to have to fix that, baby. The top goes on. Ta-da! And it's a portable typewriter. Let me see if I put a year down for that. Um, oh, 1938. It was the first year for this model. I paid $5 for it and it's worth $50 plus. These are actually selling online. This one works. We are going to clean it and oil it and put it online and see what we can get for it. Okay, that's it.